Good morning and welcome everyone. To start our program, let's call on our certified trainers from Union Deck. You're on, guys. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, please allow me to share my screen just a moment. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I'm Milch. I am from Union Bank. I'm a certified Microsoft uh, Education Ambassador, and I'm also an Employee Relations Manager. I've been with Union Bank for about eight years now. So good morning, Carla. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Milch. So I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a certified Microsoft um, Education Ambassador as well, and currently the Senior Talent Acquisition Officer in Union Bank. So I've been with the bank since 2016. Good morning, Sir Derek. Hi, good morning. I'm Derek McDow. I'm an executive of Union Bank of the Philippines. Okay, probably from the looks of it, I'm the youngest from the group. Okay, I've been with the bank for 25 years. Okay, I used to be with the academy. Okay, I've been a professor in the UP Diliman College of Engineering. And currently, I'm also a part-time lecturer at the Lasalle University College of Engineering. Okay, so good morning to everyone. Hi, Gladys. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, Mills, uh, Sir Derek, and Ms. Carla. Um, I'm also with Union Bank. Uh, yeah, a certified Microsoft Education Ambassador also. Um, I've been with Union Bank since 2017 and I'm currently a Benefits Officer. So, there. Yeah, so today we will talk about synchronous and asynchronous learning. But before that, Gladys? Okay, so for everyone, uh, during our um, 
discussion. So we will have our questions uh, raised through uh, Slido. So if you can see in your screen, you can open uh, slido.com in a separate uh, browser or in a separate tab. Or uh, if you're taking this call uh, via mobile, you can also scan the QR code. And from there, we can view your questions that uh, we can answer while we are discussing or towards the end of our session. Yes. All right. So thank you, Gladys. So are you guys uh, ready? I mean, have you visited the, the link and in included the code? Please type it in the chat box if you are, or, or we'll also type it here in the chat box for you to be reminded to, be, to visit this one later. Okay. So before we formally proceed to our topic, let's have a quick game first. We call it the myth or fact. So I will provide the statements about online learning. So please type your answers in the chat box. Are you guys ready? So thumbs up or say yes if you are ready and if you want to join, say yes in the chat box. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's begin with our statement number one. So online classes are easier than traditional classes. What do you think? Is it a myth or a fact? Okay, so just type your answers in the chat box. All right. Yes, so I can see some answers. Myth, all right, myth, and then a fact or a myth. So here's the answer. Oops. So the answer is it's a myth. So online classes are actually not easier than the traditional classes. It's just as hard or even more challenging than traditional classes. So typical class activities... Example, uh, readings, tests, and papers in the traditional setup. While in online classes, they have interactive activities like discussion board postings, collaborative projects, and game-based activities. Sometimes it's more difficult pa. <laughs> okay? So now let's go to number two. So online, all right. students can work entirely at their own pace. All right. Or let me just check. Uh, let's go back lang to this one. Sorry. Alam, may namiss tayong isa. Yeah, may namiss tayo isa. But uh, it's okay. Yes, here. So online classes takes less time than traditional classes. All right. What do you think, Sir D? Okay. Hintayin natin yung kadong audience. Yes. Okay. Nasagot na ba sila? Mm, it's, ano eh, 50-50. There's 50. There's 50. There's 50. There's 50. Okay. Well, for this particular question, it's yes, it's right. It's a myth. Okay, why do we say it? Okay, because the online classes will take more or less halos pareho or more than time than the traditional classes. Okay, there are a lot of challenges na as maikita natin later on in conducting or even participating in online class. So, the expectation na mas malit ang time na ispend natin on this. Okay, we will try to disprove it later on when we proceed with the discussion. But definitely, this is a myth for us. Yes, so it's also another myth. It is. Okay, so for the next one, students can work entirely at their own pace. So what do you think about this? All right. Carla? Should we wait? Okay, so yes. the <laughs> answers are also... Um, Myth and fact. Okay, 50-50 also. 50-50 also. So the answer for this question is myth. Um, because students must understand the meaning of the word flexibility. So it actually allows them to um, know how to manage it, their time wisely. And also online classes have um, actually deadlines as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And then for the last statement, so there's no chance to get to know the other students very well. So please mm. answer your, please type your answers in the chat box. Is it a myth or a fact? 
Okay. Answers are mostly fact. Yes. Now. <laughs> All right. Now let's reveal. All right. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. What do you think, uh, Gladys? Interesting responses from our teachers, no? It's actually mm -hmm. a myth. Okay. So, there's a lot of opportunities to get to know each other. So, the students and the teachers uh, during the online class. So, unlike the personal um, classroom setup, we can get to know uh, similar ways in uh, each other uh, during the online class. So, ito yung mga um, self-introduction. So, um, and icebreakers. Ayan. So, we can post questions like our uh, Slido. Uh, kanina. So, we can get to know to your questions. You can get to know our interaction. So, uh, even in our um, other activities during our online class. So, we can have collaborative assignments uh, to break out rooms virtually. So, with our students. So, there, there is still a chance to get to know each other. Uh, the students and the teachers very well during the online class. Yan. Yes. Okay. So that's just a warm up. <laughs> now let's proceed to right. our topic. Uh, I thank you, Gladys. So distance learning. Due to the digital era that we live in, we are overwhelmed by new learning technologies. Uh, distance learning, also called distance education, is a form of instruction and learning that are delivered remotely as a whole course or through a large portion. So all these new technologies have one thing in common. They support asynchronous learning. But wait, what is asynchronous learning? And how does it compare to synchronous learning? Let's start with an explanation of the old-fashioned way, synchronous learning. All right. So you can see here the definition and you will also find the highlighted uh, difference of synchronous and asynchronous. So in synchronous learning, it happens at the same time. And teachers and students should be in the same physical location like a classroom or at the same online environment. Like for example, a web conference or let's say here in Zoom or other communication platforms where they can interact with the instructor and other participants. While for asynchronous learning, this is a learner or student-centered teaching method that uses online resources to facilitate learning without requiring students and instructors be in the same place at the same time. So what does it mean? It's the opposite, exact opposite of synchronous. And uh, the instructors will just record the videos or prepare the deck in advance and the students can just view it later on. All right. So now let's proceed to the next part. So Sir Derek will explain the tools and the pros and cons of asynchronous and synchronous learning. Okay. As mentioned by Milch, okay, uh, dalawa yung technique natin in providing certain training materials dun sa mga students natin. Okay. When we talk of synchronous learning, as mentioned kanina, Okay, it involves lahat ng mga participants and students natin will only be in one location. Okay, pwede siyang naka-online location o pwede siyang physical location. So what are the various communication tools na pwede natin gamitin to be able to help them out? Siyempre, andyan yung online chat. Okay? Meaning, at the time that the students are doing yung participating in the online class, okay, uh, they can always do chat kung may mga questions sila, may clarification, and even the answering. Just like what we're doing right now, iba. Yung chat box natin dito, everybody is present in this online location. Kung meron kayong concern, question, clarification, we can always do the communication via the chat. Okay? Second, of course, yung usual, instant messaging by various means. Pwede naman kasi yung instant messaging na yan, wala dun sa platform na ginagamit natin. But it is also one way for us. Alimbawa, kami, right now, okay? Meron kaming Viber messaging to each other, etc. and so on. So we can also do that, okay, at the same time. Ang importante lang is, we do the usual communication. Second is yung webcasting, okay, and yung live stream. Okay, everyone will have a possibility 
of communicating kung ano yung mga messages nila okay, while we are doing the online class. Okay. So, madami pa. These are just some of the examples. Okay, pero ang importante kasi ditong component will be meron tayong capability na magkaroon ng constant communication kahit nasa online class tayo. So, hindi nawawala yon Kasi when we try to compare to at the digital class, ang nakikita kasi natin, yung mga estudyante magtataas ng kamay, magtatanong, mag-raise ng question. So, ang sasabi lang natin, even in an online class, yung ganong klase ng activity and interaction will still be present. Okay? So, yun yung ano natin. Lahat ng technology that we have right now, we have the capability for us to be able to do yung interaction na yun. How about sa asynchronous learning? Okay. In synchronous learning, as clarified kanina ni Mills also, okay, ito, meron sariling oras yung mga participants o estudyante para mag-attend nung courses. Okay. So, hindi sila sama-sama in one location. Pwede yung isa, kukunin niya sa umaga, pagkagising niya, yung mamaya, pagkatapos ng work niya, tsaka niya kukunin yung course niya, etc. and so on. But does it prevent yung mga participants o yung mga estudyante natin to do a communication para? Definitely not. Okay? Ang unang-una, yung pinaka-traditional natin, email. Okay? Siguro naman, lahat tayo familiar sa email, maski mga estudyante natin familiar sa email. So, alam nila na yung email will be a good means for us para magkaroon ng regular communication pwedeng dun sa co-participants o sa co-student natin o even dun sa mga teachers that are present. So, kung may mga questions sila, may tanong sila, may query, ito yung, ito yung sanay na sanay tayo. mag email tayo kung ano yung tanong natin, kung ano yung clarification. Okay, so, possible yan. That's one of the communication tool na pwede natin gamitin for asynchronous learning. Second, okay, familiar tayo dun sa mga discussion board. Okay, in some of the online courses and even the platform na ginagamit natin to provide yung delivery ng mga klase natin, okay, most common, meron niyang nakalagay na discussion board. Okay, sa DLSU, sa Lasal, what we're using is Canva. Okay. So sa Canva, okay, kahit nagpo-provide kami ng mga courses, laging present yung discussion board. Nag-iiwan kami ng mga messages doon. And even yung mga estudyante, nag-iiwan din ng messages nila doon kung meron mga part clarification o participation silang kailangan. Okay. So that even in asynchronous learning, kahit hindi tayo nagkikita-kita sa common time, sa common place, there is still a possibility to do a communication via discussion board. Parang doon sa unang panahon, parang ano yan eh. Para yan yung mga post-it lang natin. Naiiwan ko yung post-it dito. Pag dumating ka, pwede mong basahin, pwede mong balikan. The discussion board will do the same thing. Okay? Pwede kang mag-iwan ng message yan. Tapos kung sakaling dumating yung time na yung kusining tinatanong mo, makita niya, then he can readily reply. Okay? Sa web-based trainings, we will do the same thing, podcasting, and even sa recorded video. Okay? There will always be a means for us to do the communication. Okay? Medyo nga lang delayed. Yun nga lang, medyo maghihintay ka kung kailan, siya, kailan ka masasagot, hindi gaya dun sa synchronous na at that instant, dahil alam mong nandun yung recipient, masasagot ka agad niya. Pero dito sa asynchronous learning, medyo wala kang liberty of time na kailangan masagot niya kagad ako unless present siya. So in this particular case, okay, medyo medyo delay. Pero andun yun. Even the recorded video. Okay, you can share some of the files, the recorded video para magkaroon ka ng proper communication. Again, two ways yan. Doon sa teacher that is handling that particular course and even to the participants. Vlogs, ayan, sanay na sanay tayo sa vlog na yan. Okay? Yung mga sa mahilig maglalagay ng vlog yan, sa mga social media, etc. and so on. It is also one way for us to do the communication. Again, both ways. Ha? From, from the students, participants, to the teachers, or to the trainers, okay, it can be done both ways. Siyempre, meron din naman tayong hindi naman nagde-depende dun sa technology. Okay? Meron tayong mga the usual thing, modules, workbook that we have wherein we communicate ito yung lessons na kailangan mong gawin, ito yung mga dapat mong complete, etc. and so on. So, meron tayong mga ganyang setup. Now, this can be offered, of course, on the offline side or the use of the technology na pwede kang mag-create ng mga modules para yung mga participants mo Okay, we'll be aware also of what are the things that they need to accomplish for that particular session or for that particular day. At the same time, yung mga participants can also do a feedback, okay, using yung mga tools sa to. So all in all, as yung sabi lang natin sa communication tools, there are a lot, there is a lot of technology 
and even the traditional ones na pwede nating i-utilize o gamitin just to make sure that there will be a constant communication and we can also receive feedback from our participants regarding the courses that they are handling. So yung sa kanina na sinasabi natin, the part of the online learning experience is nawawala yung supposedly interaction, kaya siya naging meet, is because the interaction will be there. Okay? Pwede nga lang delayed siya, pwedeng real time, but there is a capability to do the interaction. Yep. Thanks, Mitch. Yes, sir. For... Okay. Uh, to proceed further, okay, ano ba yung advantages at saka advantages, the pros and the cons natin do sa synchronous learning. Okay? As, as have men, has been mentioned, okay, yung the synchronous learning right now, siyempre, ang sabi natin, ang importante dito, sama-sama tayo sa isang location, sama-sama tayo sa isang lugar. So there is really a advantage of a real-time discussion to everyone. So kung ako mismo, sabi natin, minsan sanay tayo eh. Lalo na, di ba, yung mga medyo mahiyain dyan. Na during the course, okay, may gusto akong tanongin, pero ayoko magtanong. Ako, ako, ayoko mauna. Okay? So may benefit tayo dito ngayon doon sa synchronous learning na pag may isang nagsimula magtanong, I'm sure yung mga natatakot magtanong, ah, oo, pwede na ako, etc. and so on. So yun yung benefit. There's a real-time discussion, there's a real-time collaboration to everyone which is also possible kahit siya naka-online, okay? Parang ngayon, di ba, if there will be some of you that would like to raise a question, sinasama-sama tayo sa isang location, all you need to do is either raise your hand, okay, and then ask the relevant question. And third bullet, immediate feedback. So hindi yung aagam-agam pa na may gusto kong tanongin, hindi ko makuha yung sagot, tapos na yung course, hindi ko pa rin alam kung nasagot yung tanong ko. So immediate feedback, yung mga trainer natin, will immediately provide you a feedback. At the same time, maski yung mga co-participant mo, they can also share the same experience with them. So, real time. Okay, magkakaroon tayo na exchange of information. Of course, training happen on a fixed schedule, which is probably an advantage kasi kaya nating gawa ng proper scheduling or time management yung mga activities natin. Okay? So, alam natin, itong particular time na to, itong 9 to 10 na to, iaalat ko to for this particular time. Wala na akong ibang gagawin. So, you are able to do prioritization, okay? And, siyempre, yung highly social environment, yung iba sa atin, gusto natin lagi may nakikita tayong muka, may nakikita tayong kausap, okay? Parang ayaw natin na pag isa lang tayo na nag-aaral, di ba? Alam natin, ah, lahat tayo sabay-sabay, yun yun, okay? Yung synchronous learning. So, lahat tayo are present in one location, physical or online, and all of us are looking at the same subject matter and same pacing on how we develop that course. Siyempre, may disadvantage. Disadvantage, unang-una, sabi nga natin, flexibility. What do you mean by flexibility? Since nakaset ang schedule niyan, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, pwede ba i-late na lang natin yung start? Okay? Kasi yung ibang co-participant natin have already adjusted their own schedule. So, yun yung kanila naman. Okay? Hindi na natin pwedeng ayusin para lang sa atin kasi busy tayo, may kailangan tayong gawin sa bahay, o kaya may errand tayo. Okay? We have to really discipline ourselves na ito yung schedule ko. Okay? Yung learners do not learn at their own face, well, it is partly a disadvantage kasi nga kailangan mong sumabay dun sa majority. Okay? Yung participant naman, kung halimbawa meron akong lesson part 1, part 2, part 3, okay? hindi ko naman pwedeng hintayin na lahat kayo dapat maintindihan nyo na yung part 1. Paano naman yung more than kalahati ng klase na medyo nabobor na sa part 1 at gusto na mag-advance ito a part 2 and part 3. So, we have to cater also to that. So, hindi tayo at an own pace. Okay? And, yung individual treatment depende on the size of the class. Okay? Halimbawa, kung ang klase lang naman natin, di malang naman ang participant na nag-online synchronous learning, probably hindi masyadong issue sa atin yung individual monitoring ng klase. Pero imagine, halimbawa, itong group natin ngayon, we have 77 participants. Okay? So it would be quite difficult o mahirap para sa atin na i-monitor bawat isa. Ito ba nakakasunod? Ito ba nakaka-watch up? Okay? Ito ba mukhang nakikinig? O baka itong isang to, hikab-hikab na. Mga ganon, di ba? Wala tayong ganong klaseng monitoring dun sa, uh, dun sa malaking klase. Okay? So hindi natin ma-individualize yung ating instruction o yung ating sharing ng knowledge. And technical knowledge. Of course. Okay? Kung gagawin natin siya ng online, 
kung sino man yung nagko-conduct ng online class should be familiar with the basic of the technology. Meaning, kung ako halimbawa, for my example, dapat alam ko kung ano pipindutin ko para makita ko yung mga messages nyo. Alam ko kung ano yung pipindutin ko para makita ko yung question and answer. Alam ko kung paano mag-mute, kung paano mag-unmute ng ma, kung paano mag-share ng screen, etc. and so on. So, meron kang dapat uh, good working knowledge on those technology para hindi ma-disrupt yung iyong presentation, lalo pa kung madami yung participant. Okay? And, sabi nga natin dito, pag synchronous learning, hindi mo may iwasan eh. Parang meron ka talagang dependency yung mga participant on the instructor. Okay? Nandun pa rin yung concept ng the usual classroom style na ako, maikinig lang ako kung ano sasabihin na instructor, susundin ko, etc. And so, pag pinagawa sa aking get a one-half sheet of paper, kukuha ko ng one-half sheet of paper, mag-quiz ako, okay, etc. And so on. Okay, so yun siyang sabi natin. For the synchronous, asynchronous learning, go ahead, Mitch. Okay. Next slide, asynchronous. Okay, ito yung siyang sabi natin. For the asynchronous learning, ang sabi natin, lahat ng mga estudyante can do or can go into the courses on their own. Okay, asynchronous learning. So ito, absence of the usual group of people na sama-sama sa isang lugar okay, para mag-conduct ng course. So ano yung advantage dito? Okay, siyempre, at my own pace. Okay, may time constraint siya in terms of you being able to complete yung, kung ano man yung course na naka-assign sa'yo. Pero in terms of you being able to log in at yung oras na i-spend ko dito, pwede natin sabihin na in some instances, walang time spring. Bahala ka kung gusto mo siyang i-access during the time na tulog na lahat sa bahay, okay lang. Kung gusto mo siyang i-access during the time na first thing in the morning para meron akong time, di pa ako magagawa na era, pwede yan. So yung sinasabi natin, no time constraint at learn at your own pace. Okay? At the same time, yung access sa material okay, will readily be available for asynchronous learning. Meaning, at any time na gusto kong i-access yung material na yan at basahin at aralin at kung kailan ko tatapusin, ako ang may control dun sa oras ko. Okay? Ang isang advantage ng asynchronous learning is yung availability of a lot of resources. Okay? Kasi since ako yung nagko-control ng time ko, kung may mga questions ako dun sa lesson, sa topic itself, I have the liberty of time na mag-conduct ng research. Meaning kung hindi ako contento dun sa materials na binigay ng instructor, since asynchronous naman siya, at wala naman akong concern about the pacing ng mga kaklasiko, etc. and so on, I can do my own research. So pwede ako maging resourceful para lang to complement whatever materials are made available for me. Is it a less work for teachers? Probably in to some extent kasi hindi ako present during the time of the learning. Pero definitely in terms of the preparation, hindi siya less work for teacher. Okay? Siguro ito lang yung in terms of me being able to be present during the time that yung participants ay nag-aaral. Okay? Pero yung work that is to be involved do sa preparation nito, okay, I, I will share with you, hindi siya ganun mas madali compared to what we are doing right now. Okay? Then, There are some automated tasks that can be performed. Okay, meaning, kung halimbawa mag-proceed na ako sa next activity, etc. and so on, okay, I can use the technology to be able to control the sequence ng mga activities that has to be done. Okay, on an asynchronous learning. What are the disadvantages? What are the cons? Definitely, interaction okay, will be less. Hindi ko naman sinasabing absent. Okay, sabi nga natin yung communication tools kanina, may possibility pa rin naman of doing the interaction, medyo delayed nga lang. So, walang real time. Okay, walang immediate feedback. Okay? Now, there are instances that the learners might feel a lack of personal connection. Meaning kasi wala namang nag-guide sa akin, wala namang nagtuturo, wala namang akong matanong, wala akong maklarify. Okay? Parang ako on my own. Okay? So, yun yung nafe-feel na disadvantage. Although, dun sa science part na yun, sabi nga natin, may communication tools pa rin tayo na pwedeng gamitin to be able to supplement that. Okay? Now, syempre, sa participant side, medyo importante yung iyong training, yung iyong self-motivation. Okay? Ito ngayon, nagiging disadvantage, sinasabi natin kasi parang kung ako mismo, eh, hindi ako confident about me taking it individually, medyo magiging disadvantage sa akin ang asynchronous learning. Kasi may mga, sabihin na, I mean, namin natin, may mga learners tayo, may mga estudyante tayo na mas komportable sila na may nakatutok sa kanila at may nakatingin dun sa ginagawa nila para alam nila, ah, nasa tamang direction ako. So, kailangan natin yung ganong klaseng motivation. Okay? 
And yun nga, yung sabi na, delayed feedback, limited access to facilitator, everything can be perceived as a disadvantage. Pero, sa part na yun, ang masasabi lang natin, as long as we are able to make use of the proper communication tool, there should be no problem. Okay? Doon sa feedback na ito. mag adjust lang tayo. Yung expectation natin, medyo bababaan lang natin yung expectation natin na hindi pwedeng hindi ako masagot kagad. Pero darating nga oras, masasagot din ako. Yan. Uh, that's all, Mitch. Thank you, Sir D. Alright, so with that, we'll have a learning check. <laughs> so again, please type your answers in the chat box. Uh, by the way, kindly change your message settings from all panelists. Uh, pakigawa po ng all panelists and attendees para makita din po ng iba yung answers natin and responses. Okay? So earlier, for synchronous learning, I mentioned na it's real-time classes. How about in asynchronous? Ano kaya ang answer? So again, please type your answers in the chat box. So learning check kung real-time sa synchronous, ano naman sa asynchronous? Okay. There's an answer na not uh, real-time or we can say na flexible time or own pace. Alright. How about the next one? So for synchronous learning, we have instant messaging. What about for asynchronous learning? Okay, so we can see, all right, delayed feedback, recorded messages, all right, delayed, all right. So the answer, yeah, you're also correct or you, we can say we can use email. So instead of using the instant messaging, na directly communicating with the teachers or the students, they can use email or other communication platforms. But, but for... The, for those who answered na recorded or delayed, yes, it's also uh, partly correct naman. Next, immediate feedback for synchronous learning. What about for asynchronous? Again, please type your answers in the chat box. Okay, delayed feedback. Yes, all right. We can see a lot of you who answered. Yes, the answer is delayed feedback. And then for synchronous learning, if it's group-based, what about for asynchronous learning? Okay, so we can see answers individualized, all right, at your own individual self-paced, all right, a lot of you answered. So the answer, yes, self-paced or your own pace, uh, or yes, for, for individual, okay? So... For, there are actually several factors to be considered before choosing asynchronous or synchronous learning. So, like na mentioned Yanis already earlier, there are several factors also. Uh, it could include your course curriculum, learning objectives, and of course, the interest of your learners. Each of these methods, when used independently, has got its own pros and cons. So, ultimately, uh, the better solution is to adopt uh, probably a combination of the two methodologies depending on the need of your students. So, but when to use synchronous learning, Gladys? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Ayan. So, uh, yeah, recognize yung participation ng teachers natin. No? So, thank you for that. No? So, uh, I guess from our own teaching experience, uh, naintindihan natin kung ano talaga yung nagkukuha natin or yung advantages at saka disadvantages ng synchronous. Siguro pag tinlansate natin yung sabayang pagtuto and then asynchronous, kanya-kanya. Yeah. So, next topic is um, when to use or kailan natin i-apply. So, sabi nga ni, ni Milch kanina, uh, baka pwedeng pagsabayin or pa... Um, uh, blended yung gagawin natin pagtuturo. Uh, especially sa gantong setup natin ngayon sa ating new norma. So, uh, synchronous learning or yung sabayan na na gagamitin natin siya kapag uh, ang students natin or uh, depende sa students natin, depende sa uh, ituturo natin 
at depende rin mismo sa nature ng subject na tinuturo natin. So, first is kung yung students natin ay mga uh, baguhan, uh, we can grab that opportunity to teach them uh, ng sabay-sabay on as uh, na, sa pare-parehong platform. So, uh, dito sa synchronous learning, pwede natin i-apply yun. So, pag freshman o kaya uh, nag-uumpisa pa lang, um, bilang lahat sila open, yan, uh, they're, they're open to, to how to learn we learn the subject na ituturo natin. Uh, pwede natin gamitin yung synchronous. So, sabay-sabay. Uh, if the subject or uh, if the topic we will discuss is uh, Socratic delivery or medyo philosophical, ibig sabihin, kailangan natin ng opinion, kailangan natin ng feedback from each other para ma-realize kung ano ba yung natututunan natin or ano yung atin dun sa topic na tinuturo natin. For example, literature, yan, kung paano nyo naintindihan yung story pag tinanong natin yung students. So, mas mag-work yan kapag sabay-sabay o magkakasama sa isang platform or synchronous learning. Yun. The next is, will depend on the current event for content. So, sabi nga natin, isa sa um, uh, isa sa common platform natin ng synchronous learning sa ngayong panahon is ito, yung Zoom Diba? O yung video call or yung uh, naka-online lahat, ganyan. So, uh, it is an opportunity and uh, palagay natin is mag mas magiging effective uh, na synchronous learning approach, especially kung ang pag-uusapan natin is kung ano yung nangyayari sa paligid natin. Yan. So, kailan pa natin pwedeng gamitin yung asynchronous learning? Um... Yan yung mga uh, factors na pwede nating um, i-consider para sabihin natin yung topic, yung subject, or yung lesson for that day. Ang gagawin natin approach ay synchronous or sabay-sabay uh, na approach. So, pag asynchronous naman, ayan. Thank you, Ms. Gladys, sa synchronous. Um, when to use synchronous? Um, sa akin naman, um, when to use asynchronous naman. Actually, kanina nakaka-relate din ako sa pros and cons na binibigay na point si Sir Derek. No? Parang, sina parang sasagutin nito yung mga pros and cons na na-eventure ni Sir Derek. Pero maganda rin nga na paghaluin kasi actually yung ginawa. So, um, when to use asynchronous learning? So, first is when not all students can commit to set learning schedule when they are learning from home. So, as mentioned um, kanina, um, pwede tong scheduled, no? Pwede hindi tayo sabay-sabay um, na sabay-sabay na gawin to, pero pareho ng material yung makukuha namin na student. So, um, actually, as, um, as mentioned earlier, this type of setup will be um, advantageous to students na pwede gumamit um, ng ibang location or nasa ibang um, or pwede silang mag-take time para intindihin yung um, subject na to. So, kasi may mga, um, if you would um, know yung um, audience ninyo, malalaman nyo din if meron silang um, at this point itong subject na to. Pwede kasi hindi kagad makuha, yung iba naman mabalis makakuha. So, I think um, yun yung kailangan natin i-measure. Um, to assess kung pwede itong, itong, itong subject na to or itong topic na to pwedeng asynchronous kasi hindi naman sila lahat sabay-sabay ng um, learning pace. No? Um, second item is some students do not have the technology required for easy interaction. So pareho nang nasabi um, ni Sir Derek kanina, no? depende rin kasi sa tools na availability na meron itong mga students nito. Um, I suggest pwedeng bago rin kayo, siguro sa first day of class, no? kung sabay-sabay kayo mag-meet, pwede na ninyong alamin kung ano yung mga tools na ginagamit nila. From there, you can assess kung anong topic and anong pwedeng um, maging possible learning or synchronous or asynchronous. Pero for asynchronous kasi, um, ito yung kinoconsider natin na hindi sila lahat pare-pareho ng um, tools na gagamitin. So, yung iba, pwede uh, minsan, ma'am, naka-mobile ako. Minsan naman, ma'am, naka-laptop ako. So, yun yung mga pwede nating um, i-consider si asynchronous. 
Okay, third is when um, if the material or content requires a need to be preserved or to be reviewed later. So may mga um, application tayo na ginagamit na pwedeng recorded tong um, class na to or pwede nating i um, send um, yung recorded link pagkatapos ng um, discussion. So um, we can consider kung ganun yung material na pwede naman nilang balikan. Um, maganda tong async asynchronous na to kasi yun nga may ibang students no kailangan um, kailangan basahin nila pang mabuti or mas kailangan nila ng mahabang oras so technical or complex content that is slow to change over time um, it um, third uh, fourth sorry it will work best for students who are self disciplined so na mention kanina natin na yung asynchronous kasi pwede siyang different time or different location. So, um, if yung mga students ninyo, um, kilala nyo naman na talaga sila at um, alam niyo na self-discipline sila, um, pwede natin ibigay itong kind of um, approach. No? Again, uh, babalik tayo sa ano bang um, topic na to at um, ikaw din sa sarili mo, malalaman mo din naman kung they need time no, to understand this lesson or kailangan nilang balik-balikan. Um, so overall, the benefit of this kind of learning is flexible siya. No? Especially to those um, we can consider siguro mga students who has health issues. Um, pwede rin yung mga may tight schedule. So um, ito na yung getting to know our students talaga. So I'm sure um, over time nakilala nyo na yung mga students ninyo um, kung ano yung situation nila at home, ano yung situation nila with the tools um, so, yun yung mga pwede natin i-consider. Um, overall, it will give them the ability to balance their time um, with family, school, and things. Maganda rin siyang may deeper meaning siya no, para sa akin kasi um, binibigyan mo sila ng um, ina-entrust mo sila. Um, binibigyan mo sila ng um, uh, flexibility. Hinahayaan mo silang mag-design on their own. But at the same time, ginaguide natin sila. So again, we consider um, siguro as teachers yung um, yung topic no may ako ako naging estudyante rin ako at estudyante pa rin ako hanggang ngayon so meron kasing mga topics na kailangan mo talagang namdamin <laughs> at intindihin para mas maging maganda yung output ko eh lalo na kung medyo busy yung ngayong araw na to di ba so may mga ganong situations na pwede nating i-consider para sa mga estudyante natin okay Tips in developing asynchronous. So, itutuloy ko na siya. Ano bang tips natin kung, uh, kung paano natin gagawin yung asynchronous learning? So, number one is present the learning objective and set goals. So, um, at, ato sa lahat naman ng bagay, no? even sa personal nating buhay, nauuna ang objective and goal bago tayo gumagalaw. So, maganda din na malaman ng student, mga students natin um, yung mga expectations sa kanila. Bago tayo magsimula ng bago tayo magsimula ng lecture, bago tayo magsimula ng mga um, ng lesson na ituturo natin. Maganda ibigay mo na sa kanila yung mga objective, um, yung mga ina-expect mo sa kanila, no? So ano tong mga to? Yung mga deadlines, hanggang kailan ba um, ano ba yung mga deadlines na usually na ibibigay mo sa kanila? Um, yung target skills na gusto mong i-develop um, and also, ipakita mo na din um, overall no, para um, kung alam nila yung purpose, alam nila yung deadline, alam nila yung skills na kailangan nilang ma-develop at, um, at the end of the day, um, they will be motivated to learn given the benefits. So, uh, masasabi na nila, ito na yung, ito pala yung magiging benefit. So, kailangan tutukan ko tong subject nito. Okay. And then, second point is, Use stories and real examples to boost motivation. So lahat naman tayo, if um, nakaka-relate tayo sa mga example na binibigay ng teachers natin, or um, in, in general, nakaka-relate tayo at may impact sa atin yung mga content na nakikita natin, I think mas matagal yung knowledge retention nito sa mga bata. No? Kasi nakaka-relate sila. Parang yung mga songs lang na yan, eh, di ba? Parang minsan gusto ko yung song na to kasi ito yung state of mind ko ngayon. Eh. Ito yung nafe-feel ko ngayon. Eh. So I think um, in, in general naman, no, as a person, kapag nakaka-relate or yung tinatawag nilang hugot, Ayan, naiintindihan nila yan at nare-retain yun sa kanila. So, um, ito yung um, tweaking 
ng curriculum natin na I guess sa traditional um, na way na pagtuturo natin is something na kailangan natin konting diskartehan no, para mas may impact tayo sa kanila. Kasi um, uh, to be honest naman din talaga with the situation kahit virtual, no, hindi mo makita talaga yung total expression baka nga yung skin ko ano yung skin tone ko sa virtual hindi hindi siya maka-recognize talaga sa totoo no? so i think ganun din sa content so dapat isipin natin parate mararamdaman ba ako ngayong araw nito ng estudyante ko o maiintindihan niya ba talaga yung way na pagtuturo ko do ina-apply na natin siya sa classroom setup pero iba rin talaga pag uh, nasa virtual or online yung ginagawa natin Tapos nagpuputol-putol ka pa minsan, no? Okay, next is encourage group collaborations to provide peer-based support. So, at this point, um, online facility, um, for this point, they can tap their online facilitator while studying at their own pace. So, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, ang daming sumagot na delayed, um, um, it takes time, no, at their own at their own pace. So, again, may mga subject kasi tayo na parang kailangan tumagal sa kanila or ma-review pa nila ulit. No? So, what we do here is that we create an online avenue or a platform wherein um, matatak ka nila. Uh, uso ngayon yung parang pag nilagyan mo ng at, di ba, na mention ka. So, basically, yun yung um, pwede natin gawing um, strategy para sa mga um, if they need help already. Create online groups to encourage collaboration as mentioned earlier. Tap in uh, mga Facebook or Twitter, somewhere na mahanap kayo right away. And then communicate in multiple formats. So explore then what formats works and uh, resources like links no? pag may mga supporting materials or reading materials. Pwede nyo na-send kagad yung links sa mga forum na yun. Gamify badges and certificates. So, dito lalabas yung pagiging creative niyo as teachers. You can create online collaterals, no? Pagandahin, like itong slides namin, ang ganda talaga. May mga gumagalaw, makulay, no? Ewan ko na lang po, hindi pa sila magising dyan kapag in-resent mo yung subject mo, no? Mukhang nakakatuwa yung mga formula, pero... Diba? Mahirap pala yung lesson mo. And then, add self-assessment opportunity. So, make sure that you create this avenue para ma-assess din kung ano ba talaga yung mag-work sa kanila at the end of the day. Ayan. Okay, thank you, Carla. So, now, let's proceed naman sa role of effective instructors in distance learning. So, you will see on your screens the different roles of instructors. So, one is tour guide. So, similar to a real tour guide, diba, they show all the highlights in a specific place. So, the teachers naman, uh, are, or the instructors, we are required to, to actually present the highlights and let the students learn and be able to apply whatever theories na we are presenting. So, kasunod na dyan yung pagiging reinforcer, not only for the theories or the contents that they have learned in school, but also the depth and policies, the rules and regulations. So overall, you're a reinforcer. While at the same time, you're also a cheerleader. So the learners, kasi they need some encouragement from time to time. So of course, open naman sila, or dapat we also say uh, constructive criticisms, but at the same time, depending kasi with the students, eh, there are some students na mas nagiging uh, energize sila or mas ginagalingan pa nila when they receive uh, when they receive feedback or positive uh, praise, di ba? So, teachers nowadays are also expected to become instructional designers or tech guru. So, like what we have mentioned earlier, si Carla na sabi niya na dapat the materials are very uh, creative or encouraging. Ayan, if you notice our slides, there are also uh, moving items or dapat talaga encouraging and uh, enticing siya na especially kapag asynchronous, di ba? So, self-paced yun. Dapat yung mga students, mas maingan nyo pa sila na everyday excited sila. Oh, may bagong uh, material. Uh, kasi, di ba, ang tendency kapag pare-pareho na black and white, kahit tayo, di ba, hindi natin siya masyadong ma-excite ma e basahin. And then, individual and group mirror. So, like what I've mentioned na dapat uh, nagbibigay tayo ng feedback as a learning coach, hindi mo lang dapat sila binibigyan or sinuspoon feed. So, dapat uh, ini-empower natin sila na magawa yung mga bagay-bagay. 
So even for example sa sports, kapag nagtuturo tayo ng basketball or football sa ibang mga uh, students, dapat matuto talaga sila on their own. As coach lang tayo. And then big brother, because everything is recorded online, so dapat monitor nyo sila or ina-encourage nyo sila from time to time. And then valve control. Uh, Siyempre, hindi naman lahat dapat tinuturo ni teacher. So dapat meron tayong control sa kung ano lang yung mga dapat nilang uh, or yung mga highlight na dapat nilang matutunan. So, syempre, di ba, may year, year by year naman, iba-iba yung mga lessons na tinuturo. So, may control. So, unless na nga lang si student is advanced talaga, uh, pwede naman na mag-request or mabigyan siya ng uh, additional uh, resources. And then, co-learner, syempre, as teachers, even us now, uh, we're also learning at the same time. Okay? So, ano naman ang role ng students? Sir D? Okay. Siguro, yung mention ko rin na yung may nabanggit kasi dun sa chat box na isa sa mga role ng mga ano motivator motivator okay yung ano okay yep tama tama naman tama naman kayo ma'am okay that's really part of the role of us as teachers to really motivate our students okay to do the learning okay uh, nawala um, yes ah uh, saglit lang sir sige po Ayan, okay na ba? Hmm, parang wala pa man. Wala pa din. Hmm. Ayan, okay. Okay. So, alam naman natin lahat na ang learning is really a two-way process. So, yung responsibility and role, hindi lang dun sa nagtuturo. Okay, even the students or the participants should also observe yung sarili nilang role. Eh, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ngayon na naka-distance learning tayo. Ang unang-una is, sa mga estudyante, there should really be a full involvement and dedication. Okay? Meaning, sabi nga natin, even if you're doing it asynchronous or synchronous, importante na alam ng estudyante na ito seryoso to. Hindi ito yung tipo lang na parang for attendance purposes lang. Kaya ako a-attend. Okay? Kailangan malaman nila na mas importante sa panahon ngayon na yung kanilang dedication to really learn. Okay? I can connect it sa anak ko that is doing also an online course right now. Okay, college siya, pero naka-online sila. So, yun yung mga tipo na kailangan. Alam niya na itong oras na to, talagang oras to para sa pag-aaral. Kahit nasa bahay siya, hindi siya pwedeng gumawa-gawa na iba pa. Okay? Kasi ito talaga dedicated itong oras na to para doon sa lessons nila. Accountability and responsibility, lalo na kung nasa asynchronous tayo, di ba? Yung dito, kailangan you are responsible for your own action and for your out output. Alam mo yung consequence. Kung sakaling ma-miss out ko to, alam ko yung consequence kung hindi ko siya matapos on time. So, responsible and accountable ako dun sa action na yun. Hindi ko pwedeng sisihin ng kahit sino na, eh kasi yung teacher ko hindi naman nagtuturo eh. Kasi kulang-kulang naman yung lessons eh. Yung mga materials na binigay sa akin, kulang-kulang. Kailangan kasama dun sa atin yung responsibility na yon na kung alam nga natin na may kakulangan, then pupunuan din naman ng mga estudyante na hanap ako ng ibang materials na pwede mag-compensate. Okay? Hindi naman pwede kasi alam naman natin yan sa mga teachers, hindi naman natin kayang ikunin lahat ng mga available resources at ibato natin papunta sa estudyante. Okay? Ang kaya lang natin gamitin is yung mga basic and estudyante themselves should have the responsibility na punuan kung ano man yung kulang na yon Of course, yung use of technology, importante yan. Okay, how can you do distance learning online kung hindi ako familiar? Anyway, sa mga millennials naman ngayon, wala tayong issue dyan eh. Di ba? Ang mas may issue than something is yung mga dati na sanay sa traditional. Na paano ba ako gagamit ng Zoom? Paano ba ako gagamit ng Google Meet? Paano ba ako gagamit ng Microsoft Teams? Etc. and so on. Paano ko ba makikita yung mga estudyante ko soon? So, sa estudyante, ganun din. Dapat proficient sila in the use of the technology. Collaborative nature. Okay? Sa kahit sabihin natin naka-distance learning tayo, you still need to be open to do the collaboration sa co-participants, sa other instructors, sa other resource person. Okay? Kasi nga, kailangan mo compensate na wala tayong face-to-face -face interaction. So I have to compensate for that absence by being more collaborative okay? in nature and resourceful. Okay? Yun yung advantage ngayon eh. Okay, ang daming materials that are available online that you can do a research. Okay? Hindi gaya nung unang panahon, nung panahon namin, pag nag-research kami, kailangan meron kang buong set ng cyclopedia sa bahay. Okay? 
Uh, naalala niyo yung panahon na may mga cyclopedia sa bahay, isang isang bookcase puno-puno ng cyclopedia kasi yun lang yung major reference material na pwede mong gamitin pag nasa bahay ka. Eh, pero ngayon, nandiyan na yung internet, nandiyan na yan. No? So, ang dami mong pwedeng gamitin na source of material for you to be able to do the research. Okay. Yep, go ahead, Mills. Ah, Gladys, I think. Ito si Gladys. Ito medyo... Madaming hugot si Gladys dito sa responsibilities of parents. Okay. So, yun. Um, specific to, to our current um, new normal. Yan. O now normal, sabi nga nung iba. Hindi na daw siya new kasi ilang buwan na, di ba? Uh, um, ngayon, most importantly, between the teachers and the students, uh, um, isa din sa pinaka-critical and important and urgent, o lahat ng objective na, na, na applicable, is yung roles and responsibility ng parents. So, ayan, so we help establish the child uh, uh, with their routines, expectations, a good place to learn, keep in touch. Uh, we help students with their own learning. So, kumbaga, um, we need to uh, set also uh, ano yung expectation natin from uh, the parents. Yun. Kasi sila yung um, nakakakita or uh, kasama ng students natin sa class na hindi natin nakikita physically. So, yun. Siguro uh, uh, importante na ma-establish natin with our parents as partners in learning kung ano yung dapat na set up pag uh, uh, natututo yung or mag-aaral yung students natin. So before kasi uh, I think this is a reality also in terms of the from the perspective of the the teachers, di ba? Na parang second parent ang teachers. Ngayon hindi, ngayon medyo mababawasan yung pagiging second parent ng teachers kasi uh, 24 hours a day nasa bahay na yung bata, nasa bahay na yung student natin. So yung parent role talagang babalik siya sa parent. 'Di ba? So yung yung learning uh, portion or yung yung schooling ng ng estudyante is talagang uh, i-expect natin or hihingin natin sa parents this time sa ganitong setup ng distance learning. So importante, kagaya ng mga uh, tips na pinapakita natin ngayon sa slide, um importante na ma-establish natin with the parent as, as well as with the student saan, uh, ano, at kailan siya mag-aaral kasi that will set also the focus of the student. Yun. So, syempre, ako bilang parent, uh, ayan, kung mapapansin niyo yung background ko, yan yung whiteboard nung dalawang anak ko na preschool at uh, kakasimula lang din nilang mag-online learning. So, uh, ako bilang mother na uh, very ano very uh, uh, stressful yan o very nakaka nakaka alala nakaka worry kasi hindi ko alam kung paano matututo yung mga anak ko na mag-uumpisa pa lang mag-school so yon so yung uh, part yun nga parang inestablish nung school kung saan kami nag-enroll you know, inestablish namin na uh, mag-partner kami sa 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 school year na to um May may iwang platong hindi mauhugasan, may iwa, may may iwang labadang hindi malalabhan o maiisasampal. Pero dapat hindi pwedeng maiwan yung students natin in terms of their learning. So ganun siya, ganun siya ka-critical in yon. Syempre yun nga, ganun na ako kahugot <laughs> in terms of the roles of the parents. So very important na ma-establish natin sa parents yung partnership, whether online to, whether modules to or kung gaano man sila kalayo. Kailangan uh, makita nila na hindi natin to kumbaga hindi na mas sa pagtuning so kailangan may mag-traffic sa na nung two ways na yon ng teacher at ng students at dun dun papasok dun papasok yung role ng parents so tayo din uh, yung parents ini expect natin ding mag mag um kumbaga uh, encourage or dagdagan kung ano yung tinuturo ng teachers natin when they do synchronous. Siguro, siguro kung naka-online class kayo, pagkatapos ng online learning, we we uh, we set the expectation sa parents na 
i-check din sila kung kamusta yung naging online, di ba? Kasi yun, real time yun. Pagka-sign out ng estudyante, pwede nang kamustahin agad. Hindi kagaya before na paglabas ng estudyante, pupunta pa sa computer shop, bibili mo ng merienda, datambay sa kaibigan bago uuwi, tsaka lang mga kamusta ng parents kung ano yung nangyari sa school. This time, parents have the opportunity to get the real-time feedback and encourage the learning. Okay, quick um, questions to ask yourself. So I'm sure marami tayong matatilan today over um, our lecture about asynchronous and synchronous learning at mga tips and anything na pwede nating nagawa with this kind of um, teaching or teaching approach. So ito lang ang mga questions na iiwanan namin sa inyo na I'm sure masasagot ninyo ang dapat. Dahil napakagaling na mga nagtuloy sa atin today, kasama na ako dyan. Okay, so first question is may tatanong or masasagot niyo po ba sa inyo ang palagay kung are the synchronous elements in your class required? So, kailangan ba to o may i-apply ba to sa students ninyo right now, sa subjects ninyo right now? If you want to retain synchronous learning lecture, can it be recorded for asynchronous viewing later? So, as mentioned, meron tayong kanilang pros and cons. So, probably pwede rin nating i-mix yun as suggested by Ms. Milch and Sir Derek. And third, how will asynchronous requirements be scheduled so students will have lecture? If asynchronous naman yung mapipili nyo for this requirement, um, anong structure yung ibibigay ninyo and applicable para sa students? And then last, how are you going to motivate the students to finish the courses? So, may mga mapapressure na magaganap. So, individual pacing where it allows the students to design their own learning schedule. So, I think magandang training din to para sa kanila at magandang opportunity para sa atin as teachers to establish yung um, yung trust no, sa students natin. Probably pwede kayong maglagay ng mga alerts na deadline for today or reminders or online discussions na pwede natin gawin para real time at nachocheck din yung kami natutunan sila. They can segregate their own depending time, which subject is harder from them. So at the same time, pinagkakatiwala din natin sa kanila na kung they need more time to understand the subject or the lecture, then they can do so. So ayun, maraming salamat. I hope masasagot natin itong mga questions na to right after o mapapag-isip pa na natin yung mga sagot natin. For this. Yes. So again, if may further questions pa kayo, earlier we have shared yung slide the link and the code. Uh, feel free to uh, to log your questions there. And of course, kung hindi po po kayo nakapag-sign up sa Heroes, uh, mag-sign up na po tayo sa Heroes platform and don't forget uh, to use the Union Bank or the City Savings Code. Okay, Milch, may isang tanong doon sa, ano, sa chat. Okay. Oh, sige, From sige. Mr. Benicio. Okay. How can we assist and help our students if the internet is too weak in their area? And how can we know the children will actually do their activities? So yung siguro yung weakness ng internet area, ito yung tipong advantageous yung asynchronous. Kasi yung weakness ng internet naman, ang usual problem naman kasi niyan, uh, ano siya, intermittent eh. May oras na malakas, may oras na mahina. So dito siguro ang gagawin natin, mas applicable yung asynchronous kasi when the time na kaya na nilang i-access, then yun yung gagamitin nila para magkaroon ka ng lesson. Yung sa pangalawang question, how can we know the children actually do their activities? Ito yung importante ngayon na naka, ano, naka plano ng maayos, even yung mga work exercises that need to be done, etc. and so on, para nasusundan mo kung may progress yung activity ng mga bata, ng mga estudyante. Okay? Ngayon, siyempre, ibang usapan yung malalaman ko ba kung siya talaga yung gumawa ng activity. Okay, discernment na ngayon yun ng mga instructor na alam naman natin kung ano yung capability ng mga bata. So medyo alam natin kung dapat ganito lang yan na medyo matatansya natin. Uh, pinagawa ba sa iba to o siya ba talaga ang gumawa nito? Mah mahirap yun, maski, maski sa, sa real time uh, classroom, mahirap gawa ng ganong klaseng decision, eh. discernment ng mga instructor eh. Pero definitely, as long as we have structured yung ating materials at yung activities ng estudyante, there should be a good way for us to monitor the progress ng mga bata. I hope I was able to answer yung question ni Mr. Benicio. 
You did. Yes. Maraming salamat daw, Sir Derek. Hello. Thank you daw. Thank Ayun, you. Um, meron pa isa. Ang problema dito ay yung mga parents na nagtatrabaho sa labas, hindi work from home. Ayun, Gladys. Yung, yung ah. role ng parents. <laughs> <laughs> Ako po yan. Ginagawa ko po yan. So, hindi po ako work from home lagi. So, MWF po, nasa opisina din po ako. So, ang pwede nating uh, isuggest sa parents, uh, sabi nga natin pag parents, papasok na siya sa asynchronous learning. So, pwedeng maiba yung oras ng pag-aaral, pero hindi pwedeng mawala yung oras ng pag-aaral. So, yung dating Facebook time, o yung dating playtime ng students, uh, pwede natin isuggest sa parents na yun yung gawin nilang oras para hmm. mag-aral. So, bago maghapunan, o kaya pagkatapos maghapunan, bago, bago matulog, doon nila gagawin yung module nila. Hmm. Siguro yun din dito, hindi lang naman, yung parents kasi na role dito, we just uh, related to a parent. But in most cases kasi, I'm sure sa bahay naman, may mga elder sila na kapatid o kaya yung may mga yaya. So we can also train yung mga ito to help us out do the management and the monitoring. Okay? Anyway, kasama na yun dun sa ano natin. Uh, we have to be in collaboration also with other members of the household to make sure na yung mga estudyante natin sa bahay are really doing their work. Pero as a parent, sabi nga, tayo yung may ultimate responsibility. So at the end of the day, we still have to do the check-up. Pero from the time na hindi ka nasa labas ka at hindi ka nasa bahay, then you can actually provide yung mga ibang kasama natin sa bahay, yung kanilang sariling role and responsibility to do the monitor. Okay. A good example ako, alimbawa, yung apo ko, okay, preschool. Okay. So alam namin na lahat kami busy sa work, kahit work from home, so may naka-assign sa kanya na oh, bantayan mo to ha, pag nag-online class, tignan mo kung ano yung ginagawa, etc. And so on, sumusunod siya sa teacher. So pwede natin bigyan. Okay. Yung mga ano na yun. Okay, tapos may isa pa na dito. Lah. Sige, gusto ko lang sagutin tayo. Another problem po are parents who are not able to have formal education. Ma'am, hindi naman po limited kasi yung meron tayong formal education to be able to do the proper monitoring and the role. Okay. Uh, ang sa atin right now, sa panahon ngayon, especially sa uh, pandemic that we have right now, Okay, ang kailangan lang talaga natin, sabi nga kanina ni Carla, alam natin yung goal, alam natin yung objective. At sabi din nila Gladys at tinamil, mm -hmm. kailangan alam natin yung dedication ng mga tao at alam natin kung ano yung gusto natin i-accomplish. And given that, okay, makakagawa tayo ng paraan to be able to help out yung mga estudyante natin. At lalong-lalo na yung mga teachers. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, eh, experience ko yan, hindi biro mag-prepare para sa online class. Yeah, kung iniisip na iba, ang dali lang naman yung trabaho nyo kasi ibagawala kayo ng materyal kasi ipapasa siya. Hindi ganun kadali. Okay? Ibang iba pa rin yung formal classroom type in handling a class compared to an online class. Okay? Sa akin nga, ang nire-require ko sa mga estudyante ko, kasi nag-lecture ako ngayon sa Lasalle University, ang nire-require ko, kailangan bukas yung camera nila during the time na nagkaklase ako. So, dalawang screen to. Yung screen ng lesson ko, at yung screen ng camera nila na tinitignan ko kung ano yung reaction nila na mga kamamaya, nawawala na sila sa harap ng camera, salita ko na salita, wala na palang tao. Diba? So, yun yung mga wala eh. Hindi gaya nung sa face-to-face -face interaction, nakikita mo yung body language yung mga estudyante. Alam mo kung nabobore na sila, alam mo kung naikinig sila, alam mo kung may ibang ginagawa nila. Sa online class, walang ganon. So, kailangan mo i-compensate. Kailangan kong gumawa ng ibang paraan to be able to serve the support of the students. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. thank you. Siguro, thank dagdag you. ko lang din, Sir Derrick. Mm -hmm. uh, dagdag ko lang din, Sir Derrick. Uh, Doon sa parents na walang formal education. Siguro, mm -hmm. familiar yung teachers sa uh, word na teach back. Mm -hmm. Yun. So, yung students, i-assign natin na turuan yung parents nila. Kasi doon mababalidate ng parents, ah, nakinig naman yung, yung anak ko. Kasi alam niyang ituro sa akin. Hindi ako marunong nito, pero na, na kwento niya sa akin, na ituro niya sa akin, ano rin lesson niya for today. So, yun yung pwedeng validation. So, kahit hindi yung module, uh, pwedeng ikwento o pwedeng ituro ng, ng anak yung naging lesson nila for today, doon sa parents. So, yun. At least doon, uh, palagay ko makakampante ako na, ah, natuto yung anak ko. Okay. Uh, may mga nag-request ng copy ng presentation. Yes. So, uh, Gilch, we will just coordinate with Thames. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
provide the copy. Uh, pero yung nag-ask ng question kung ano yung ginamit namin for the presentation, we're using Canva. Uh, pwede po kayong mag-visit or i-check yung, i-explore nyo po yung isang uh, platform na to or tool sa canva.com. Hmm. Alright. Okay. Yan na i-promote pa natin si Canva. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> And yes. then, yun nga po, kung hindi pa po kayo again nakapag-sign uh, up sa Heroes, it's time for you to sign up. So, may I ask uh, Ms. Lee of uh, Thames International to share the video again. Thank you, everyone, and see you sa next session. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Lee from Thames International. Um, then sa last webinars po natin, we have invited everyone to sign up for Hero, uh, Heroes course. Sa bago po natin registrants or mga bagong attendees po natin today, Um, turuan ko lang po or let me just walk you on how to register sa Heroes 2021. It will just take two minutes. So very easy po yung process natin. So just go to your browser po. Yan. Type Heroes 2021. And then click the website. Yan. Dito po yung page ng Heroes. Click sign up. Create your account, name, email address, password. Yeah. Tapos, click sign up lang po. And then, babalik po tayo ulit sa page na yon. Click all courses. Yeah. Dito po natin makikita yung course ni Union Bank. Yan po. Click po natin yung Union Bank, City Savings Bank, worth 3,000 pesos. Yeah. Ito po makikita po natin yung courses. Ito po yung... Um, Webinar schedules po natin. Schedule po niya is every 9 a.m. Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And then ito po yung course curriculum. Don't be discouraged po kung medyo mahaba po ito. Um, this is just less than one minute or minsan five minutes long lang po siya. So you can finish it in actually two hours. And then sa baba po, click lang, scroll lang po kayo and then click enroll. Um, this course is worth $3,000, but um, because we are sponsored by Union Bank and City Savings Bank, this, uh, this course we can get for free. So let's just use the coupon code. We can use po Union Heroes 2021 or City Savings underscore Heroes 2021. Kahit ano pong code. So you can take a, a, a picture of the code so you can use later. And then apply lang po. Click apply. Yeah. Thanks for enrolling po. And then you just... Uh, click the go to uh, course curriculum so you can start the course, start the lecture. That's, you know, po, very easy po siya. So that ends today's session. Milch, any parting words? Uh, thank you and uh, see you guys uh, on Friday. <laughs> okay, Friday. Okay, so we will be here again on Friday. Para sa another topic that we'll be sharing with you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.